Protestant John Rogers meets Roman Catholic Mary. As soon as Mary becomes the Queen of England, she immediately has John Rogers arrested and summoned before her council. And so, Rogers is charged with heresy. He is confined to house arrest. He is stripped of his ministry position at St. Paul's Cathedral. And in January of 1554, the new Bishop of London sentences Rogers to Newgate Prison. And in December of 1554, the English Parliament passes new legislation that if you are not upholding the Catholic dogma, you will be put to death. And so on January the 22nd, 1555, Rogers is brought back before the council and he is condemned. The sheriff comes for him and asks Rogers if he would revoke his evil opinion of the Mass. And Rogers said, that which I have preached, I will seal with my blood. The sheriff responded, then you, sir, are a heretic. Rogers replied, that shall be known on the last day at the judgment. The sheriff chided, well, I will never pray for you. And Rogers said, but I will pray for you. He is hastily brought out of his cell and led on foot through the streets of Smithfield. His own church members, as I said in the last session, began to cheer, encouraging him, urging him to remain true to the faith that he had preached to them. Others were belittling him and, and taunting him and, and mocking him. He marches to the stake in front of this vast crowd, repeating Psalm 51 by memory out loud. And the public can hardly believe that this is happening before their eyes. Would they recant their convictions before the flame was, was ignited? Or would they remain true to their profession? The suspense was so thick you could cut the air with a knife. The French ambassador was present, who was a zealous Catholic, and wrote a letter at the end of this day in which he said, this day was the confirmation of the alliance between the Pope and this kingdom by a public and solemn sacrifice of a preaching doctor named Rogers, who has been burned alive for being a Lutheran, meaning holding to Luther-like doctrine. But he died persisting in his opinion. At this conduct, the greatest part of the people were not afraid to make him many exclamations to strengthen his courage. Even his children assisted at it, comforting him in such a manner that it seemed as if it was his wedding day. John Fox, who wrote Fox's Book of Martyrs, writes this, the fire was put to him, and when it had taken hold both upon his legs and shoulders, he, as one feeling no smart, washed his hands in the flame as though it had been in cold water. And that signified that his heart and his soul and his life had been washed clean by the blood of Christ. And after lifting up his hands unto heaven, Fox writes, not removing them until the devouring fire had consumed them. So he holds up his hands up unto heaven, and the fire just burns its way down his hands until there are no arms any longer. Until the devouring fire had consumed them, most mildly this happy martyr yielded up his spirit into the hands of his heavenly Father, the courage of one believer instills and inspires courage in other believers. And if Rogers had caved in, if Rogers had recanted his faith, it would have been devastating to the others at Oxford before they were martyred. But Rogers held fast. And because Rogers was courageous and bold and, and remained strong, it caused 
Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley and Thomas Cranmer to also remain strong. And the same is true for us here tonight. When you are strong in the Lord, it inspires steadfastness of faith to your family, to your friends, to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you're a Christian, would you please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing this video? If, however, you're a pagan, please get saved. And then like, subscribe, or share this video.